Robbie, what's on your radar today? So former White House coronavirus advisor Anthony Fauci doesn't believe the lab leak explanation of COVID-19's origins is a conspiracy theory. Wow. He admitted that during a closed door grilling session before the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic on Monday. Legislators did not release a transcript of his testimony, but Representative Brad Wenstrup, a Republican from Ohio who chairs the committee, published some highlights on X. In recent months, Fauci has denied that he ever categorically rejected the possibility that COVID-19 accidentally escaped from a laboratory. But he faces very serious allegations that he deterred scientific experts from considering it. At issue is the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2, a paper that appeared in Nature Medicine, a scientific journal, in March 2020, the very start of the global pandemic. Fauci was then head of NIAID, the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and also Francis Collins, then director of the National Institutes of Health, participated in a conference call with the authors of that paper, whose initial openness to a lab leak explanation changed significantly prior to its publication. The paper ultimately ruled out a lab leak as not just unlikely, the phrasing used in an early draft of the paper, but improbable. More recently, Fauci has contended that he always remained open to the idea of a lab leak, but was persuaded by scientific arguments, including those in the Proximal Origin paper, that zoonotic spillover was more likely. Now, this claim would be more persuasive if Fauci had not stated over and over and over and over again in media interviews that he strongly favored the zoonotic origin theory. His subsequent suggestion that he did not lean in either direction is flatly contradicted by his literal words. Check out this recap from Matt Orfelia. If it may have been a lab, may have been nature, we're supposed to look forward, then why did Dr. Fauci work so hard for just one of those theories? What do you say to that? I'm almost have to laugh at that, Neil. I mean, that's totally bizarre. First of all, I wasn't leaning totally strongly one way or the other. I wasn't leaning totally strongly one way or the other. Flashback. What I do feel strongly about is that this was a spillover from an animal species to a human. Strongly suggesting that, in fact, it was a natural occurrence. Very strongly. Strongly indicating that it was a natural spillover. Strongly points to this being a natural occurrence. Pointing much more strongly. Pretty strong. Towards a natural occurrence. Very, very strongly. Strongly favors a natural occurrence. I wasn't leaning totally strongly one way or the other. It's very, very strongly leaning towards this could not have been artificially or deliberately manipulated. I lied and lied. Did he have his thumb on the scale? I don't know. You tell me. Now, it was certainly in Fauci's interest to downplay the possibility that, the hum- that human experimentation on viruses accidentally unleashed COVID-19 upon the world. During his career, Fauci remained one of the foremost advocates of public funding for gain-of-function research in which scientists manipulate viruses in order to make them deadlier and more transmissible. Fauci and other public health experts have straightforwardly denied that the U.S. funded such research in Wuhan, China. But critics say this is an exercise in semantics. Indeed, EcoHealth Alliance, a U.S. nonprofit that obtained public funding to conduct research on bat coronaviruses in Wuhan, China, was caught actively misleading Pentagon officials about the nature of the experimentation. Peter Daszak, the head of EcoHealth Alliance, advised colleagues to deceive regulators about the fact that the research would be conducted in China under laxer lab safety standards. A group of elite scientists deliberately lied to U.S. security officials in order to spend American tax dollars performing risky experiments under substandard laboratory conditions in a notoriously secretive and authoritarian foreign country. Maybe those experiments created COVID-19 and maybe they didn't. In any case, it's clearly not a conspiracy theory. Good of Fauci to recognize the obvious, however belatedly it might be. Now, one can debate the extent of Fauci's wrongdoing here for certain. It's the mainstream media that really dropped the ball in terms of lab leak discourse if we're revisiting this topic. Remember that the Washington Post was an early offender accusing Senator Tom Cotton of repeating a coronavirus theory that was already debunked. The article explicitly applied the phrase conspiracy theory to the lab leak idea. Now, the New York Times did the same thing, noting that the lab leak had been dismissed by scientists. In fact, the Times lead coronavirus reporter, Apoorva Mandavili, went a step further, calling the lab leak a racist theory. 
Mandeville's tone toward the lab leak was broadly representative of a whole host of mainstream journalists, media commentators, and so-called fact-checkers and misinformation experts. Following this flawed consensus, social media sites, including Facebook, brutally suppressed any and all discussion of the lab leak theory on their platforms as recently as August 2023. The Journal of the American Medical Association was still counting lab leak discourse online as evidence of the unstoppable spread of misinformation. And the Global Disinformation Index, a British nonprofit that received funding from the State Department, well, they warned that blaming the pandemic on a lab leak could lead to racist attacks on Asian people. So that's a long way of saying that self-appointed misinformation information cops went to great efforts to censor and stigmatize this topic of conversation on grounds that it was either racist or conspiracy or both, yet it's neither. Even Dr. Fauci says so. Now, one might hope that this would prompt some self-reflection within media circles. The anti-misinformation crowd wasn't just wrong. They were militant that it was of vital importance to stop everyone from even contemplating the possibility of a lab leak theory. There's a perniciousness underlying this attitude and one that clearly threatens free speech as many U.S. political figures, including people like President Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren, have decided that the federal government should do more to combat purported misinformation. Now, they might consider whether they themselves have been misinformed. And I just saw a uh, screenshot of a World Economic Forum um, ranking misinformation and disinformation as the number one global threat above even like ex- climate change and extreme weather events. There's a there's a a dramatic. Um, uh, quality to the way misinformation and disinformation is described. And it's like, it, it's fine to disagree on the origins of COVID-19. We still, we still don't know for sure. Uh, I'm not saying that we do. It, it's fine for, for people to favor the other explanation and to make the case for that at a time where more of the scientific community was saying that. But so many of, of the people in the media went a step further and saying that like you shouldn't even be able to express opposition to that. There's something wrong with that. And sort of implying and suggesting to politicians figures that that kind of speech actually ought to be criminalized if possible. And that's what I'm so worried about. Yeah, I very, very um, viscerally remember the lashback, the pushback against uh, covering the possibility of lab leak origin um, shortly after I started my podcast and started talking about it in the summer of 2021. And it was it was really stunning how even in an era where it felt like things were relaxing a little bit, kind of post-vaccine, people were coming out of their houses and the emergency nature of the of the public temperature seemed to be abating, that there was still such a, a vehement pushback against people even considering in the format of a YouTube podcast the possibility of lab leak origin. And so I think Matt Orphelia did a really amazing job putting together those clips because some folks really would memory hole. Um, the advice that was given at the time. I think it's fine for people to make mistakes, but to hear Fauci... Or to change their mind when new evidence emerges. Sure. Sure, But to hear uh, Fauci deny that he ever used language that he specifically used over (laughs) and over and over and over again, you know, it's the gaslighting that I think has polarized so many people more so than the initial uh, mistake. Yeah, absolutely. Well, stick around. We'll have more rising right after this.